One of my all-time favorite cured meats to make during hunting season is venison and mulberry salami. For the mulberries, I personally love to pick them in the park behind my house at their peak sweetness during early summer. I then dehydrate and store them until later in the year for projects like salami or sausages. When I'm ready to make the salami, I rehydrate them in a fruity hard apple cider for about three days until they are nice and plump like this. I will also add kosher salt and cure salt number two with sodium nitrite and nitrate, which I use a gram scale to weigh out to the manufacturer's recommended limit this gives a great cured flavor and helps prevent botulism toxin from forming. Next I have dextrose, which is the food source for the bacteria culture I will be adding to help reduce the pH. 30 minutes before mixing, I bloom or rehydrate the culture in distilled water. This culture I'm using is BLC007. This bacteria culture is great for fermenting at room temp and helps prevent listeria and other bad bacteria from growing. Okay, last but certainly not least, I'm going to add cinnamon powder. This is really going to make the salami fitting for the holidays and suitable for almost any palate. For the meat base, I will be using ground venison as well as ground pork. Mind you, I have used 100% venison for this recipe and it came out excellent. Okay, for mixing, I put the ground pork and venison into the mixing bowl and then add the bloomed bacteria culture. This will give the culture first dibs on the surface area of the meat to help ferment. Next, I'll add the dextrose to fuel the bacteria culture. I like to give a decently thorough mix before adding in the kosher salt and cure salt. After the salt has worked its way into the meat, I'll add the cinnamon powder. And lastly, the apple cider soaked mulberries. I give this a good mixing until everything looks completely incorporated and the meat has a nice sticky bind to it like so. For stuffing these bad boys, I'll be using my 5 pound lamb sausage stuffer, butcher's twine, a sausage pricker, a scale with a plastic bag over the top, and a nice sharp knife. For the casing, I'll be using these cut and tied beef rounds from Kraft Butcher's Pantry. To prepare these, I rinse off the casing of any salt and let lukewarm water rehydrate the inside for easier stuffing. This can be done a day before. To fill the stuffer, I push the meat mix to the bottom and punch it down as I add more to mitigate any air pockets. These casings are unique in the fact that they are shaped like the letter U when stuffed, so I always make sure to curve it away from me so it doesn't fall off the table. Each casing should hold about one pound of meat. To tie, I will use butcher's twine to make a bubble knot with the extra casing. Then I'll use the factory's tie and tie them together and finish it off with a hook loop. This will ensure even drying while it's hanging. With the sausage pricker, I poke holes all around the links to help reduce air pockets. Quick note about making salami and things alike. I definitely recommend checking out good manufacturing practices for fermented and dried meats. That explains in detail the parameters, dangers, and guidelines on how to prepare salami safely. These guidelines are what I follow and I've never had any issues. Website link below. Okay, for fermentation, I'll hang the venison salami up on my dry storage rack with a plastic bag over it. This helps keep humidity high during fermentation and protects it from possible contamination. With the extra meat left over in the stuffing tube, I make a small chub to use as a pH tester. I'll keep the chub alongside the salami fermenting to help keep the same environmental conditions. I use a thermometer slash hydrometer to gauge temp and humidity during this crucial period. Okay, it's been about 18 hours and I'm going to test the pH of the tester chub. As you can see, the pH has hit 5.1, and the tester chub feels firm and smells a bit tangy. To me, it's ready to hang. The salami will be hung in a wine refrigerator, joined by two others that I call Dark Night Salami and Salami Mede. Those videos should be up on how I made those too. During the next 30 to 45 days, I keep the temperature as close to 50 degrees and slowly bring down the humidity around 90% to 75% over a period of weeks along with light airflow with a small fan. This slow reduction in humidity will help mitigate any case hardening issues that can completely throw off the texture of your salami. Okay, 45 days later and a 40% weight loss, let's cut into this bad boy. Oh man, it's looking fantastic. And I can already smell the sweet aroma of cinnamon and that beautiful salami tang. I'm seriously happy with how this turned out and you can see the bind held together extremely well. 
and each slice just has a bit of fruity mulberry in it. This venison and mulberry salami could complement any charcuterie board in the world, like this one here, for example, joined by its siblings, Dark Knight Salami, Salami Mede, Venison Ham, Lamb Bacon, and various sharp, funky, and mild cheeses. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.